And we begin with Dr. George Spaeth. And he's going to talk about how do you find an ethical physician? And so we begin with a good question and a good speaker. Hi, glad to have you here. Uh, Have any of you heard of Bernie Madoff? (laughs) People thought he was a great money manager, right? A lot of people gave him a lot of money. Anybody heard of Mao Zedong? A lot of people thought he was a great leader. But he killed lots and lots of people. Doctors come in different colors and varieties and skills. And they're like good brokers or bad brokers. They can help you or hurt you. So don't assume that the doctor you're seeing is going to be somebody who's going to work in your best interest. That's basically what it means to be an ethical doctor, that that doctor wants you to do well. And that's on the top of his or her agenda. And unfortunately, uh, how do you, you know, how do you find a good broker or a good lawyer or a good anybody? Because we all need people to help us. So this is a talk about how, when you're thinking about doctors, do get your Villanova friends to come on in. Uh, How you can find uh, somebody that you think you can trust who's going to be beneficial to you. Now, in medicine, we're now required, when we give talks and medical meetings, to talk about whether we have conflicts of interest. And I'm starting this talk knowing that this is not a big issue with you people, but to point out that when anybody tells you they don't have a conflict of interest, you better not believe them, because everybody has a conflict of interest. We all want to do that which is going to help ourselves. That's our first agenda always. And your physician wants to do that, which is going to be good for him or her, too. But what you want to make sure is that that conflict also works for you. So recently I gave a talk, and I started and said, I have a financial conflict of interest because I see private patients. And private patients are not going to come to see me if they don't think I'm very good. So I want to make sure that what I say sounds like it's going to work well for patients. I've got an academic conflict of interest because I write papers and I don't want people that are going to be reviewing my papers and things like that to think I'm some kind of kook. And I have a personal conflict of interest because what I'm getting across to you, or I hope, is something I believe in very strongly. So I'm biased. (coughs) Okay, so then what is an ethical physician? Well, first thing, let's go through the knots. They're not ethical because they publish papers or they're good administrators or they perform research or they're (coughs) well-known or that they're recommended by another patient or they're recommended by another doctor. Many doctors will recommend other doctors they know won't disagree with them. Now, that's not to say it's not important to publish papers or administrate or refer, but they don't relate directly to whether you're ethical or not. Ethical physicians, first of all, along the line of what Plato said 2,500 years ago, know who they are. 
they know their biases. They know when they can do a certain surgical procedure well and when they can't do it well. So they, first and most importantly, they have some good idea of who they are. How do you tell about that? Well, you can't really, but you can get some kind of a clue. For example, a certain person who says, I'm the best at something, well, they don't know themselves because nobody's really the best at anything. They may be among the best. They know their strengths. They know their limitations. <clears throat> they welcome criticism. Your doctor says, you know, I think you need some surgery, and you say to yourself, see, I don't really know whether I need that or not. And you say, I think I'd like to see another doctor, and the doctor is unhappy at that. You better see another doctor, because that doctor is not the kind of person you want to see. Good doctors welcome the idea that, they, that they're told by their patients that the patient's worried. And they welcome the idea of being able to share in the responsibility for caring for somebody. They're pleased to refer when appropriate, not just because they want to make sure they're not getting in trouble, but because they're interested in their patient. Ethical physicians talk to their patients. Best definition I ever heard of medicine was medicine is dialogue. That's what it's all about, is finding out from the person what's concerning the person and then speaking to them in a way that they can understand that. Ethical physicians believe in the meaning of the word, doctor. What does doctor mean? Doctor means teacher. That's what a doctor is. They're doctors of laws, doctors of divinity. Certainly not just medical doctors. Doctors are teachers, and that's probably the most important role that the physician plays, is being a teacher. We happen to be, not by chance, members of a really wonderful profession, a profession that professes, that says it will help people get better. I'm very proud to be part of that group. And when your doctor seems to be making comments that indicate that he or she is sort of off by himself and everybody else in their profession is over there, I think you better be pretty cautious. And they respect their patients. In fact, if there's one word which is at the heart of ethics, it's respect. It's respect. And I think also, because we're not talking about ethical lawyers or ethical businessmen, though I'm not sure it doesn't apply there too. <clears throat> They're rather like Albert Schweitzer, one of the really great physicians in history, and at the core of his belief system was a reverence for life. But how do you find such physicians? Because that's, well, people can tell you. If you have a physician who you already trust, you believe in that physician, that's a good source. And I have some physicians that I really trust, not necessarily they're doctors for me, but I know they're very good internists or very good neurosurgeons. And so when I need a patient referral, I'll call them up and I say, who's a good doctor in Washington, D.C.? Or who's a good doctor in Paoli to see this patient who's got a bad back? Because I trust them. This is more dangerous. <clears throat> Certain procedures such as cataract extraction, usually work very well. The techniques for doing cataract surgeon surgery are now very well defined. Because a patient has a cataract surgeon done, or glaucoma or any other surgery, that seems to go well, 
doesn't mean it was necessary to start with, and it doesn't even mean that it was really well done. The body has a huge capacity to heal itself. So just because your friend got a good result doesn't mean the person who was associated with that was really a good doctor. Nowadays, there are lots of best, best doctors. We're going to talk about that a lot. You know, what's the best doctor? <clears throat> Not too long ago, a letter came to the Yale alumni from the head of the admissions committee. I really liked it. And what he was saying was that, unfortunately, many people who are applying to colleges now look at lists of best colleges. And he was saying there is no best college. Yale happens to be ranked very high in those, but he said that should never be the reason for choosing a college. Because everybody's different and every college is different. And the challenge is to fit the student with the right college. And that's the same thing for the doctor. There is no best doctor. So all of those lists can be very misleading. Good housekeeping, best doctors, Angie's list, they can give you some clues, but they're not going to tell you what you need. And I'd be very, very skeptical of those bests. Remember, also, how do you get listed on a best? Well, your colleagues vote for you on some of them. And those colleagues, it's sort of a popularity contest. And doctors who get well known tend to be on those lists, but that doesn't mean because they're well known that they're good doctors. So there is no generic best doctor who's best for everyone. But there may very well be a best doctor for each one of you. Somebody who comes to know you, and you come to know him or her, and there's something that works. So what are the characteristics you want to look for? Probably the best comment I ever heard about caring for patients was said by Francis Peabody, a doctor in Boston, many, many years ago. And he said, the secret of caring for the patient is caring for the patient. And when you care for patients, you're aware that, gosh, maybe I shouldn't do that operation because I don't really I don't think I'm really that good at that operation. So that's, do you get the sense, and almost everybody's pretty good at that, do you get the sense that this doctor really cares for you as a person, cares for you with all your funny parts? And is able to make you feel cared for? Now, one could say good doctors don't use new or experimental treatments because no new and experimental treatment's proven by definition. You don't know whether it's going to work. But good doctors do use new and experimental treatments. It depends on you and whether that treatment is needed for you. There may be no good treatment available. If there's no good treatment available, well, Gosh, we better try something new and different that may work. You have to know that it's new and experimental, but that may be the best thing for you. Good doctors don't order unnecessary tests. They're expensive. They always carry some risk and inconvenience, but good doctors do order unnecessary tests because there are going to be situations in which, gee, I don't really know. I don't know what you got here. And I'm going to order some tests, and I don't know whether all those tests are really necessary or not. But I do know we have to find out what's happening. So we're going to order some tests, and maybe they'll tell us what we need to know. Good doctors know what they need to know. Now, you're the best judge, and you're also responsible for your choice. And remember, you don't have to stick with the person you chose. If it doesn't seem to be working, 
change. It's very interesting to me that in the Hindu trinity, you've got Brahma, Vishnu, and Shiva. Brahma is the creator. Well, of course we need to create. Vishnu is the maintainer. And we need to maintain things. And Shiva is the destroyer. Why would you ever have a destroyer in a godhead? Think about that. Why, why would you put destruction as something which is godlike? Any answers? Because there's nothing more difficult than discarding things. All you need to do is come to my house and see. It's tough. It's really tough. And it's hard to discard what you think is right and isn't right anymore. It's hard to change habits. It's a tragedy that most abused wives stay with their abusing husbands. They don't leave. You think, how can that be? They go home and they get beaten up every day. So if you don't think your doctor's right, have the courage to challenge that. But don't challenge it just because maybe you don't like some of the aspects of the care that are unimportant. So then in conclusion, if you're going to have a winning team, you want to have good players on that team. If you're going to invest your money, you're going to want to invest it in somebody who's going to help you, who's going to be your advocate. It makes a difference. So choose wisely, because it's going to affect your emotional health, your physical health, and your financial health. Yes, sir. Could you define uh, in a few sentences an unethical doctor? Sure. The question is, how do you define an unethical doctor? An unethical doctor is a person who's doing whatever he or she does, primarily for his or her own best interest, not for yours. Simple as that. Orders tests because that's a good source of revenue. Maybe a super surgeon, but takes out a cataract that doesn't need to be taken out. Ethical people, ethical physicians, ethical friends are people who act in your best interest. Unethical ones are ones who don't. Other questions? Yes, sir. Uh, is it wise then to say that, you, like, you judge other people with a suspect and a prospect? Say that again. George, did you get that? No, I didn't. Uh, is, it, is, it, uh, is it wise to say that there are, like, I treat other, like, I rate other people. I, I treat my friends like a prospect and a suspect. Whom do you trust? I still don't understand the question. Do you? You totally talked about people, prospect or suspect, correct? Uh, I mean, how do you treat people? If, if a physician <laughs> is not, I mean, if I'm, I'm a patient and I'm not satisfied with my physician, for example, as treating me, um, do I have to go someplace else to get treated? Why are you not satisfied? Well, the question was, as I understood it, I am a patient and I have a physician and I'm not satisfied with the physician. Well, the first thing you have to figure out is why you're not satisfied. And if you're not satisfied because you wait too long, say to the doctor, hey, you know, I wait two hours for you every time I come here. Or you're not satisfied because you think that uh, 
you are not being listened to, you say, you know, I've got some real questions for you, but every time I come here, you just say hello, do a couple of tests, and then rush out of the room. I don't think that's right. Let the doctor know how you're dissatisfied. Otherwise, you know, maybe the doctor doesn't really realize that. Thank you. Speak to him. Thank you. Thank you very much, Dr. Space. Thank you. Really.